Good evening. This is Kathleen Hardcastle and welcome to my PowerPoint presentation for Organizational Systems Theory. The Key Definitions. The first question we want to ask this evening is, why study systems theory? Well, general systems theory processes how we respond and adapt to our environment in a way that keeps systems in place. Systems theory explains structure by designing models for decision making. Various systems models can be used to help explain and make decisions. The following are four examples of various systems theory applied to my school, Trinity Christian Academy, which is a preschool here in Miami Gardens, Florida. The four theories we're going to be discussing are agency theory, resource dependency theory, population ecology theory, and institutional theory. Agency theory. This is probably the simplest organizational theory that I studied this week. It starts with one boss, one person starting a company or working in a field or doing whatever, and one worker. Well, as the work gets more and more and the, they get busier and busier, the principal is too busy to do the work and so he hires an agent. However, once you hire someone else, that principal cannot completely monitor the agent. And so he has to come up with incentives to motivate the agent to benefit the principal. In other words, if a farmer hired someone to work with him in his farm, he would have to watch the person working or oversee him to make sure the agent was actually doing the work that he had been hired to do. Agency theory assumes that there is a conflict of interest between the principal and the agent. The principal has a job he wants done and an outcome that he expects, and the agent is expecting to receive wages for doing probably less work than the principal would like. Agency Theory Applied At Trinity Christian Academy, we started with one site director, two teachers, and seven students. It was a small organization. As the school grew, more teachers were hired, cleaning staff and food personnel were hired, supervisors were appointed to oversee the growing staff, and a pay grid was established identifying pay for different experience levels and education levels. We had to hire supervisors to watch the teachers to make sure that they were clocking in and out properly, doing the work that they were expected to do, which included cleaning and other uh, activities besides just watching the children. Various bonus structures have been attempted. Over the years, I have done things like given incentives for teachers who uh, maybe bring in new students to the school, or maybe the teachers voted as the uh, teacher of the month. However, I must say that I have come to recognize that the reward system that's in place is extremely important that the teachers feel that they are appreciated. That is probably the biggest incentive that I can use to motivate the teachers. The next theory is resource dependency theory. Resource dependency leads to relationships. Resource dependency theory has three basic points. One is to fulfill their values-driven goals. In order to do that, organizations need to find resources. Re organizations need to um, 
find resources that are often not controlled by the organization, so they're out of the organization's control. And to acquire those resources, organizations build productive relationships with the entities that control those resources. So in other words, in order for a system to work, the organization has to go outside of themselves to find the resources that they need to get the job done. To apply resource dependency to my school, Trinity Christian Academy partners with other community organizations to provide services and finances for students and families. Without some of these partners, Trinity Christian Academy could not exist. For example, Step Up for Students provides scholarship funds of age school aged children. The Children's Trust contracts with Trinity Christian Academy to provide out of school programming and summer camps. The Early Learning Coalition provides finances for school readiness as well as technical assistance. Trinity Church provides access to potential students, infrastructure, and decision making support. Controlling the finances ensures an ongoing relationship with each one of these entities. It also means that those partners have power over Trinity Christian Academy. So we are dependent on the resources that are outside of our control. We have three site directors at Trinity Christian Academy. These directors have the authority to make a variety of decisions. However, the ultimate power or resource holders are the Director of Education and the Trinity Christian Academy Board. So resource dependency uh, has a lot of influence over how an organization works, over whether or not an organization is even viable. Population ecology is theory is the um, organizational theory that other organizations play a role in affecting the success of the organization. So population ecology suggests that the performance of an organization is determined by the environment, not the managers or a strategic choice, which is different from resource uh, theory because in resource theory the, the idea is that the managers uh, are making decisions that are controlling the uh, system. Organizations are born and die mainly due to environmental factors outside of the control of the organization. As the density of a population of organizations grows, it becomes more difficult for new organizations to be born within that population and for existing organizations to continue existing as resources become more scarce. So in the example of Trinity Christian Academy, for instance, if there were a population of preschools in an area, it becomes more difficult for a new preschool to be born within that same area because there are already oversaturation of the other preschools and the resources needed, which are children to attend the preschool, becomes less as the um, uh, population is saturated. Population ecology theory applied to Trinity Christian Academy. Trinity Christian Academy existed for many years as a K-12 school in North Miami. As the demographics of the neighborhood transitioned, the school was unable to make the adjustments needed to attract students who could afford the private tuition and the school closed. However, there was another school that was geographically close to Trinity Christian, Christian Academy and that school was able to adjust tuition and their marketing. They focused on the new immigrant population and they continue to serve those students even today. The new Trinity Christian Academy was reopened as a preschool and is slowly growing by one grade level per year. It continues to be a challenge, however, to identify and attract students. Geographically, there are other preschools in the area and so the population is saturated. In order to make a difference, we have to uh, look at our systems and decide how can we change our population 
to grow and not be um, confined by the other uh, populations in the area. Institutional theory. Institutional theory is an, uh, can help explain why some organizations find it difficult to make transitions or demonstrate flexibility. In other words, they kind of get stuck in the mud. Legitimacy is critical. This can create inertia and justifying doing things in a certain way. In other words, an institution or a organization that is institutionalized is seeking legitimacy and they have a need to be considered legitimate and that can mean that they are unable to make changes and it justifies them continuing to do the same thing over and over the same way. The individual adapts to the system of norms, values, and beliefs within institutional environments. Institutional theory helps explain why institutions tend to be similar. Here is a um, grid that I created based on the three uh, legitimacy, le legitimacy for organization, the three bases of legitimacy for organization put forward by uh, Jennifer Powers in her organizational theories and the educational organization. Her, her uh, supposition is that there are three pillars, she called them, regulative, normative, and cognitive. And those are regulative, following the rules, rules, laws, and sanctions. What is the law is the right way. Normative, complying with internalized morals, social obligation, norms, and values. And what society says is right is the right way. Cognitive, doing things the way they've always been done. Symbols, beliefs, and social identities. This is the right way because there simply is no other way. So once these three uh, pillars of legitimacy get set, it's difficult for an institution to make changes because it looks like it's just always been done that way and this is the way it needs to be done. So um, an institution needs to reevaluate their uh, norms and values and their beliefs and social identities. Since institutional theory applied, most preschools are very similar. Their decor, rituals, and expectations tend to conform. Rules and regulations from organizations such as the Department of Children and Families assures all preschools follow the same rules. Parents and families want their children educated and cared for in a familiar atmosphere reflecting their own upbringing, and so they have a tendency to not want to change. Breaking out of the mold is difficult and can take years to establish. An example is Marie Montessori, who was ridiculed when she introduced a new way to teach preschool. However, that way today has become um, an extremely successful and highly thought of way to have a preschool, but it's very different than the way it used to be. Finally, I'm including a graphic that I found, which is Habits of a Systems Thinker. And I thought this was such a great picture because it really uh, graphically explains the habits of a system thinker. So a, a system thinker needs to look at the big picture and collaborate. They need to view different perspectives and note how changes in one area may affect other areas. They need to identify how the system works and then predict what will happen by, if they make changes. They need to evaluate the results after they have made changes and the changes have been implemented and they need to make corrections and continue to improve the system to meet goals. So the habits are not ending, there's not really a beginning and an ending, it is a circular process that needs to continue and that is the importance of system thinking. Finally, the resources that I looked at to uh, find the definitions and, and try to uh, understand these different systems theories and how they are important to us as we continue to study systems theory. Thank you so much for your time. Good night.